Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. It has been a little over four months now since I did my last update on acrylic lids. It was just as the winter was beginning to start and I wanted to get a little bit of more humidity control in the fish room. And I had meant to do some updates on that, but I have so many experiments going on that it just kept getting shelved. It's not obviously one of those critical things and it's just something I want to get to and I just kept putting it off. And the odd thing is, I still have a lot of those experiments on the go, and it is because of that that I'm going to get to this today. And that's because I really don't want to start anything new. I have enough tests to keep track of, and I don't really want to mess any of that up. And I'm doing the retests as well, and I am getting into the nitrite tests. And I simply just don't want to end up having, uh, like I said, too many things on the go. So this is the perfect time to take care of one of those shelved items and get to it now before I get into more stuff and it gets shelled again for another long period of time. So acrylic lids. I have been working on them now for uh, over a year for sure. Uh, probably even longer. I actually have to go back into the, my video list and see how long I've been doing this. And I have actually come to a number of conclusions. And I mean acrylic lids uh, will warp. And that is their general problem. So my aim here was to minimize that warpage, to get it down to the point where it just wasn't significant anymore. And the reason why I'm doing this is I actually like acrylic lids. I mean, for the longest time I used to use glass lids, and you've seen my aquariums, they're rimless, so whenever I took a lid off an aquarium, I have to be really careful not to have any glass-on-glass -glass contact, because you end up with shelling and chipping and that sort of stuff and create you know, sharp edges. And also, because I have concrete floors here, I have to be very careful when I put it down. And every now and then, when you're in a rush, and there's other things going on, and you're just not paying attention like you should, uh, these sorts of chips and shellings happen, and then I'd have to sand them down just to make you know keep it safe. So I decided to start working with acrylic to see if I can make uh, an acrylic lid because first off, they're a lot lighter and easier to move around. And if I end up banging into something, it's uh, not important at all. So initially I started off with one eighth inch acrylic because it is thinner and cheaper. And what I did is I would build a frame for it and then have that uh, the lid itself sit inside that in the aquarium and as it warped like it would, uh, I would just flip the lids over and that was fine for a while, but it ended up, if you got busy again, uh, you'd have a gap and sometimes fish would jump out of those gaps. And the other thing I was trying to do is minimize the amount of evaporation in the fish room and it was not uh, good enough, it wasn't tight enough. So I tried putting bracings on them and that helped a little bit, but it doesn't take a whole lot of free span of uh, 1 8 inch acrylic for it to start to warp. So instead I moved up to uh, this. This is quarter inch. Now for this thickness to be viable for lids, it has to be significantly better than the 1 8 That's because it is twice the price. And if I am going to go to that expense, I want to see a really good improvement. I don't want to end up having to uh, make a lid and then flip it over periodically just as I had to do with uh, the 1 8 As it turns out, as you've seen in my prior videos, quarter inch is actually much more uh, resilient when it comes to warpage. It uh, warps a lot less. It still does warp, uh, but it is manageable. And I find there's a couple things I need to do to manage that even better. And that is to keep the pieces relatively small. If you remember my aquariums that were uh, 12 inches wide by 24 long, I had end up making uh, smaller lids that went across the width. Uh, part of the reason for that was to fit in the high humidity planters. And the other part was so I can remove uh, one or two sections, depending on how much space I needed, uh, for testing things out. So I have a little bit of flexibility that way. And I find those lids are doing really well. Now I also have uh, 24 by 24 tanks and for those uh, what I thought I would do initially was uh, make a lid that was a full 24 long but only fairly narrow so I was making them six inches wide. I made a few of those and I put them on the tanks and that's been about six months now and I also cut one sheet and I didn't put any bracing on it and I put that over the tank just to have it as a comparison. 
uh, near the end of this video you'll get to see those and I found even though the bracing really does cut down on the amount of warpage I get uh, the 24 inches uh, still has from my eye anyway a significant amount of bend uh, you'll get to see it in a minute here but so what I decided to do instead and this is something actually I figured out about four months ago uh, what I wanted to do was put a center brace across uh, the tank so it's going to be uh, thin and it's going to have a top brace and a bottom brace uh, si uh, similar to this to keep it straight and then I would make these lids here this is going to be uh, one of the two that I'm going to be putting on today and it will sit on the corner or the side of the tank and go to that center brace and that I hope well these lids here should do perfectly fine uh, there I've been testing them out and you'll get to see those in a few minutes as well and I find that they uh, warp very, very little. And I'm talking about um, probably a deflection across uh, the six inches here of about maybe a half a millimeter, which is perfectly fine for me. This is That's the kind of thing I'm looking for. So now it is a matter of testing whether or not the center brace idea is going to be significant, if it is going to uh, stay straight as well. So that's what this is all about today. I'm going to put uh, on the uh, my Pleco breeding tank, uh, I'm going to put the, this on there, I'm going to try it out, and we'll see how it does in a few months. And like I said, that is pretty much how I progress on these things. I'm sure I'll end up uh, shelving this for a while, uh, you know, after that period of time, simply because of other things going on. Uh, but I will, hopefully in time, end up with, you know, a lid that I actually really like. I, I mean, as far as the uh, 12 inch by 24 inch tanks these are perfect um, but for the longer ones we shall see and as you can see there's a difference in uh, the bracing here the part that's really close to the edge goes towards uh, the corner of the tank and then the wider span the one there is actually for where the sits on the brace so these i made over four months ago and i have not flipped them at all since then and you can see that there is just a tiny, tiny amount of difference in their trueness. It's not quite as uh, flat as they were initially, but that is just nitpicking. That's uh, none of these here uh, have a significant amount of warpage, even to like to can be concerned about at all. And like I said, that's that's perfectly fine by me. That's uh, what I'm looking for. Now, what I did, I remember I said I made the 24 inch long ones and that's going to be coming up here right now. This is older than the other lid and it has been sitting on a span like this ever since I made it. I have not flipped it either. And as you can see, there is a, not a significant amount of warpage, but enough. And this of course is just a piece of acrylic uh, stretching across and you can see how well those braces uh, prevent the warpage. It is it is a fair amount but again I'm trying to get them to be the point where long term uh, they'll stay straight so I think I'm going to like I said I think the center brace is a good way of going but again I always test things out and as always I have overbuilt it I think it is uh, the bottom brace I'm happy with uh, it reaches down almost to the water it's the top one I don't think it needs to be that uh, tall I made it at an inch I can saw that off later on or uh, see, we'll see how this one goes because I don't think it needs to be that tall. It's not in the way or anything, It is, but its only purpose is to prevent the lids from uh, sliding um, towards uh, the screen where you are now and then of course it's falling into the water. So there you go. It sits quite nicely and uh, we'll see how this goes. And as always, if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe. And I am getting on to a lot of the other tests. Uh, it was just <laughs> no way I could have uh, put another one of those up right now or started another one. So, And this is a new position for it. Uh, these lids I try to make so that they will fit in all the positions on all my tanks. So even if the center brace doesn't work, uh, these lids here will go on my 12 by 24 tanks. So there you go. Oh, one other thing I did while I was doing this, I cleaned that uh, top for the high humidity. And to make it easier to get in and out, I uh, put slits on there instead of holes. It won't really be a significant change in the humidity in them, I'm pretty sure. And it makes it a lot easier to get them off. So thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video, and bye for now.